Hi guys, so in the last part of the video we saw how NMR worked, so now let's look at some specific examples of some spectra. In an exam you're going to be given the chemical shift data, so you don't need to memorise it. What this will look like is the chemical shift along the bottom ranging from zero, which we know is TMS, the reference, and it's going to go up to about 220 for carbon, showing the usual things you would expect to see in a molecule. So if we had a peak around here on our spectrum, we would see that the only thing that could be present is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. If, however, there was a peak around here, you would see that this could be a carbon attached to a halogen, a carbon attached to an oxygen, or a carbon attached to a nitrogen. So you might have to use other information to work out what's present. This just tells you, based on where the peaks are on the spectra, what could be present causing that peak. So now let's analyse an example of carbon-13 NMR by thinking what one would look like for a given molecule. So let's think about how many peaks this following molecule will give, which has an aromatic ring and then branches coming off it. Well, we know from the previous part of the video that each environment of carbon is going to give its own peak. So here's one carbon. This is distinctly different from this carbon, because obviously this carbon is only attached to one other carbon, whereas this one is attached to two on either side, so we can easily see they're different. And just the same way we can see that this carbon is different, because it has a bromine group attached and an aromatic ring which the others don't, and this carbon is different because it has this carboxylic acid group attached. This carbon is then again different from all the others, but now when we move down, you will see that these two carbons are the same. We've shown the Kekulé structure of an aromatic ring here, which may be confusing because it looks like this has a double bond above it, whereas this has a double bond below it. However, you'll know from our videos on benzene and aromatic compounds that in fact, an aromatic ring has delocalized electrons and is symmetrical. So both of these carbons are one away from where the branch comes off and the rest of the molecule is symmetrical. So in fact, these two are exactly the same and are only one environment. These two carbons are also exactly the same. And then finally, this carbon is on its own in a different environment. So we can label all of these carbons, starting here with one, two, three, four, five. Both of these are in environment number six. Both of these are in environment number seven. And this final one is in environment number eight. So we would expect to see eight peaks on an NMR spectra. So if we look at the spectra given by this molecule, we can see that there are indeed eight peaks. And we can also think about which peak corresponds to which carbon. This peak is far to the left, near 180 parts per million on the shift. So if we look back to our table, which again you would have in an exam, we can see that around about 180 is where a carbon is double bonded to an oxygen and another electronegative compound like nitrogen or oxygen. So looking at our molecule, that's this carbon here, the one that's part of a carboxylic acid group. So we can label that on as four. We then have four peaks corresponding to four different carbons between about 120 and 150. We can see that these four peaks correspond exactly to where the aromatic region is. It's hard to tell them apart more than this, but we can see that these four peaks are the aromatic ring, so carbons 5, 6, 7 and 8. Next, we have a peak that's just shy of 60. So looking back to our diagram here, we can see that this lies in this range where it could be attached to an electronegative element. This could be nitrogen, oxygen, or one of the halogens. So looking at our molecule, this is most likely to be carbon number three, which is attached to bromine, so would be where we expect. We then have two peaks here, which are both around about 20, and you can see that that is in the range of being a carbon that is attached to another carbon. 
With these peaks, we can even go slightly better, because as we've talked about, how close a peak is to zero tells you how similar it is to TMS. So looking at our molecule, this carbon over here is furthest away from all of these electronegative elements, which are going to move the signal more towards the left-hand side. This carbon is most similar to TMS, so we would expect it to be closest to zero. This carbon is closer to the carbon that's attached to bromine, and the effect of the bromine being closer is going to be to move the peak further away from zero. So this would correspond to carbon number two. So you can see that just from having looked at the molecule and used our data, we can explain how many peaks there would be present in a spectra and talk about where the peaks would appear and assign peaks if needed to particular carbons in the molecule. So we're going to split this video again here and in the next part we're going to talk about hydrogen NMR. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.